Very confident looking. Gino Oriema, 32nd year. Just broke Pat Summit's record for NCAA tournament wins. 113 of them. And UConn wins the opening tip underway in our second national semifinal. Mississippi State, a heck of a year. 33 and 4. Magical season, whether they got here to Dallas or not. At one point, they were ranked as high as number four. And they do it with defense. And a quick theft by Richardson. William with it. The little point guard they call her Itty Bitty. 5 5, maybe. Allen clangs away by Dillingham on her first shot. Well, generally speaking, Connecticut's going to pick what they believe is the weakest late shooting, and then they're not going to guard them. And so Dillingham gets quite a cushion, and it bricks the first opportunity. Nurse has been absolutely on fire beyond the three-point line, shooting it ridiculously well, 25 out of 33. Here comes Vivian, and nails a three. 16 points a game. She can heat up as quick as anybody. What a great sign for Mississippi State. To be candid, they did not look good in practice yesterday. They did not look great in shoot around this morning. They needed some early shots to go down. So big confidence booster for them with Vivian. Wriggling free inside, and Williams will draw the foul. Perhaps the best all-around player in the country. Well, I don't think there's any question about that. And to Holly's point about the challenge that she is facing, Gabby Williams, giving up all of those inches inside. Well, guess what? McCowan has got her hands full because Gabby Williams is the best athlete in the country, and she's coming on fast as an offensive player. You know what we see th throughout the season, Doris, is we've seen players give that cushion, and from tape, you can't understand how explosive this young woman is so they give a cushion but it's not a deep enough cushion and so you've got to find that early on in the game is what is the best for you as a, as a player with her foot speed to be able to keep her in front oh and by the way then there's the leaping ability yes. you know jumping up faster than anyone hanging there forever just a spectacular athlete a relentless motor who seems to be able to cover 94 by 50 quickly up top for richardson gets a nice clean look McCowan right back at 6'7", using her size. Top Bulldog rebounder gets about seven of those per game, but she's been a different player in the tournament. Williams trying to swing the pass, denied by Richardson. Made a couple of nice plays right out of the gate. Vivians lines up another long one. You're talking about a legend in the state of Mississippi. She scored, get this, almost 6,000 points in high school. How about Samuelson on target with her first one? I think the key for Victoria Vivians, however, and you, you said it, a great score. She has 63 points in the NCAA tournament. It's taken her 62 shots to get there. That kind of inefficiency can't beat Connecticut. The count on the entry. Yes, nice touch in close. She can be an offensive force. She exploded for 25 against Florida this year. Here's Collier, can't hit. And UConn one and done. Mississippi State with an early 7-5 advantage here in the first quarter. Remember, last time against UConn, they scored only four in the entire first quarter. That's going to be an offensive foul. That'll go on. McCowan, and that's already two on Tierra McCowan. And they got off to a tremendous start. Victoria Vivians in early transition just pulls up for the three. Mr. Dak Prescott in the house in anticipation and then the fish pump. But that's huge. Chinwe Okori has got to come into the basketball game. She's not the offensive force that we have seen McCowan start to become or at least opportunistically a force, McCowan. Samuels in another one. Not this time. She had been very chilly in the tournament beyond the three-point line coming into tonight. We saw an unfortunate injury by her sister, Carly Stanford. Was not able to score. Foul on the baseline in Stanford's loss in our first national semifinal. A bad ankle injury it looked like. She tried to battle her way through it very bravely, but was not a factor. Collier with her first. And you're seeing a piece of Collier, Collier and she is really gotten under the skin of Gina Ariema at times this year for not being able to defend without fouling. The one Achilles heel when you talk about UConn is foul trouble to either Williams or Collier. So now Collier has to be extra careful not to pick up that second here early on. Here's Johnson. Oh, she'll bank it in. 
Rashada Johnson typically doesn't have to do that because she hits 44% out there. Williams slicing through and a blocking foul as well. But just an explosive first step. And not only an explosive first step, the burst is incredible, but the stride is equally as good. Your first step as an offensive player on a drive has got to take you there. And where it took her was right by the hip of the defender, O'Corey, who did a poor job closing out. Look at the strides. I mean, my goodness gracious, are you kidding me? Oh, That's from the free throw line. Yes. O'Corey was still going toward half court, and Gabby Williams was almost at the basket. That's how, how elite her quickness is. Williams with five. Number two on the team in rebounding, second in blocks, third in scoring, number one in assists. Nicely done as they get free underneath once again. Richardson connects her first basket. Listen, this is a team that beats you by 60. The biggest margin in regional history in the NCAA Women's Tournament. I love the composure of the Mississippi State team to start this. They're aggressive and they're defending and they look confident offensively. A completely different look. You're right, Doris, so far anyway. There's Williams again, but no. Man, has Richardson done a good job of cleaning up the defensive glass? Thinking the exact same thing, Kara, because you know this. You've got two elite offensive rebounds in Collier and Gabby Williams. And if you're disciplined and can check them out, that takes away a big piece of their offense. Oh, look at the effort by Gabby Williams. Can't come up with it, but sprawling on the court. And Mississippi State with a 12-8 lead. She just pushes herself to exhaustion. I mean, look at her right now. I mean, she's she's breathing hard. She's so fit. She'll recover. It's not that she can't continue to play at this pace. She plays at this pace better than any player in America. Shot clock down to one. Johnson launching. Nothing there. Back over to the Huskies it goes. That's a lazy possession. Right. I mean, get something going towards the basket. I'm sure that's what Vic Schaefer is thinking right now. Attack, attack, attack. Nurse beating the press. Slams on the brakes, but can't bury it. Collier with a rebound. A lot of contact there. Now a whistle foul will go on Johnson of the Bulldogs. What a start for Mississippi State on the offensive end. They needed this brilliant pass there by the point guard Morgan William and Richardson doing it on both ends. I like the strategy to start it, right? The early drags against the bigs of Mississippi State. McCowan's already got two. The reason he's saying that is both Chinwe Okori and Tierra McCowan can struggle with their feet in those ball screen situations. I tell you, Gabby Williams doesn't need any drags. No, <laughs> I just give her the basketball and let her go. She's a drag to guard inside. <laughs> Collier, no. Let's go to Holly Roll. Holly, the last time they met, we've talked about it already. 60 points. The game was over in just a couple of moments. They went back and looked at it, Mississippi State, because their head coach said, you're going to watch it. Oh, they watched it as soon as they landed. They said they went right to the film room, and the coach made them watch every agonizing second. It took almost an hour to get through just the first quarter alone. He said, part of it's UConn, but we are better than this. That's why this start for Mississippi State is so big. They've already got 12 points in this game. They barely had 12 points in the half last year against the Huskies. They learned from that very painful and agonizing film session. This guy was so honest with us when we met with him privately on Wednesday. He said, listen, I was humiliated, embarrassed. I was supposed to give a speech at the Final Four about defense, and I called the person responsible said, are you sure you want me? <laughs> yeah. Johnson trying to penetrate. Denied there. Back out for William. Itty Bitty, who dropped 41 points on Baylor last round in one of the great single performances ever in this tournament, and on target with a triple. They look supremely confident. And UConn does not. They've made only two out of eight. Their last eight shots, but they turn to Gabby Williams. Well, what does she do initially? She starts to drive the basketball. She's developing more and more confidence in that 15-foot face-up jump shot. Give her seven points. Mississippi State, the number two seed and the champion out of Oklahoma City. They are brimming with confidence. It's William again to swing it. Richardson from way downtown. 
Sean picking off the rebound, and now the Huskies trying to build their offense again. The number one seed champions from the Bridgeport Regional. Here's Collier. He can do that. She doesn't take a ton of them, but she makes 43%. That's what makes her so difficult to defend. I think she's the most complete offensive player in the country because she can post you up, but she can also do that. She can step outside and hits over 40% from beyond the arc. Averaging 24 her last 11 games. Rebound comes to Johnson, and she'll set it up again for the Bulldogs. The kick with Corey underneath and hit as well. She'll be at the line. This is what happens when you get beat off a dribble drive, right? You force a little step up. Somebody on the weak side of the floor is open. I like the way Mississippi State is handling the basketball and then finding the open player. So you have Mafisa who's got a foul, Kara, and she's got to be conservative defensively there because she does not want to pick up that second foul. Oriana only plays maybe seven, probably six. He'd play five if he could get away with it. And foul trouble a couple of times has crept into the picture. Not often, but when they've played some close games, it's been because of that. And that's going to be a backcourt violation. John's a little bit beside himself, but Katie Lou is too. Well, she's saying it was tipped out of her hand. And therefore, it should not be a backcourt violation, and I agree. The I defender gets a piece of that. Mississippi State 5-5. William lines it up well shy. Gillingham, oh, nice save on the baseline. Here's Vivian. Great hustle again by William. Well, it's not often you see Connecticut out hustled. They are getting beat to every 50-50 opportunity, and that is surprising. Richardson picks up the double team and throw it away. Stolen by Williams. On transition. Back out. Mississippi State wanted a walk there. UConn may have benefited from a missed call on that occasion. Way downtown. Vivian's that one bangs away. See, I'm telling you, they're content to let her fire away because her shooting percentages are not great. It, it, she is as if there's any fish in a score as there is. Now, a rare mistake like that by the Huskies as they toss it out of play. When you write about Vivian's, she only hits 38% and just 28% from three, and she takes by far the most shots. There are small windows within a game that Connecticut gives you an opportunity by virtue of their mistakes to take advantage. Mississippi State must capitalize here. Again, the 6-7 McCown on the bench with two fouls early. Coming up on the final minute of the first quarter of our second national semifinal. Shot clock now a factor at five. Vivian has to knock it back toward midcourt. Nurse went sprawling along with William. Those two going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I think they're going to get William with a foul. That is. That'll be her first. So 57.7 in the first quarter. This is a Bulldog team that really relies on defense as much as anybody in this Final Four, maybe more so, holding opponents to 39% shooting, just 28% beyond the three-point line. They will run you off that three-point line. Williams with the kick. Collie is the open shooter. Too strong. So the Bulldogs trying to add to a rather surprising lead here in the first quarter, especially in light of what happened the last time. William, yeah, that's two. They're such a better offensive team than they were a season ago. And part of the reason is they're more balanced as a scoring unit. And the fact that Morgan William is making herself an option at the lead guard is important. Oh, that's going to be a foul against Nurse. As she sent a Bulldog sprawling, and it was... William went down hard. Nurse picks up the foul. That's number one. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yep. Something extra there. And I would look at that. I mean, I would want to take a look at that if I'm an official. 
for a possible flagrant. It, it looked a little excessive to me. Mm -hmm. When she, it, had she just turned her body, that's one thing, but when she threw the left shoulder. And Mississippi State on the glass. Outstanding, they have out-rebounded UConn 14 to five. You must get the last shot here. Do not let UConn get a run at it the other way. Williams, quick step. How about that shuffle pass, but a whistle on the play with point three showing. Boy, she is so much fun to watch. Curse, Curse will pick up her second. And Richardson at the line for two. Brianna Richardson, the 6'1 senior out of Conn, here's Georgia. And Sunday at 5 Eastern on ESPN and watch ESPN. Join us for the NCAA Women's Championship Special presented by Capital One, followed by the National Championship Game. And visit NCAA.com, the home for 90 NCAA Championships. And that's the end of the first. Bulldog faithful are delighted. Connecticut has a 111 game win streak. They beat this team by 60. Vivian gets them started in early transition with a three. Morgan William with the three. Mississippi State here to play. He's got you wondering, when's the last time Gina Oriema and UConn was down nine to somebody? And Holly, you were listening in on his huddle a moment ago. That's right, Gino Oriam is actually in a full sweat. He has got sweat on his upper lip, dripping down his brow. I'm not sure the last time I've ever seen that, to be honest. He just told his team the exact same thing. You guys are not used to being in a game like this. I told you this was not gonna be easy. You're used to it being over by the half. He wants a little more fight and response from his team right now. Well, I think I go back to what we have talked about over the course of the last couple of weeks. For, for Gabby Williams and Katie Lou Samuelson, Nafisa Collier and Sanaya Chong, all of these players are experiencing the weight of responsibility for winning for the first time. The stakes go up the deeper you advance into the tournament. And there's a lot of weight wearing that jersey because the expectation is championship. Now they've met every challenge beautifully and you certainly expect a run here, but I love how Mississippi State has started the ball game. William fires, a long range shot, won't drop, but again, they're all over the glass. McCord coming off that bench. That's the eighth offensive rebound, 12 second chance points. They are dominating in the want to areas Mississippi State here is early on. Dangerfield now in the game, the freshman guard at 5 5. So both point guards at the same height. Sean looking for Collier, but a misfire in close. Boy, she's one for five. We're talking about a player who's one of the most efficient in the country, and look at that start, Dave. Averaging 24 points, 10 rebounds, shooting 73% in this tournament. But it's been chilly so far tonight for Nafisa Collier. Second quarter underway here in Dallas. The winner to get South Carolina in a championship game. Shot clock down to two. Got a fire at Richardson. Got it! A three at the buzzer of the shot clock. Wow. And look at this lead. 14 points for Mississippi State. And listen to this crowd. Well, it's such an odd sound. It's awe and shock. Williams at a collision. That's an offensive foul. A charge on UConn. And you gotta believe this. Most of the people in the building understand how gigantic an underdog Mississippi State is. So the more they make plays like this, and the more they can put some game pressure on UConn, you gotta believe the louder the crowd gets for the underdog. A 12-0 run in the last four and a half minutes for the Bulldogs. Another three, but this one will be shy. Samuelson with the rebound and she's fouled and knocked to the deck with 7.58 to go before halftime and back to that corner three moments ago. Hey, there wasn't much time left on the clock. Dillingham just a nice little drive and kick and Richardson has been huge. She might not be the player that's leading them in scoring as you see 
Randall Stewart and Morgan Tuck thinking, what in the world? We're down double figures. Vivian's just picked up her first foul. Poked away, batted free. Vivian's beat Samuelson. She lays it in. Mississippi State is pouring it on UConn. Wow. Did anybody see this coming? After what happened last year in the Sweet 16, that's a tough shot by Samuelson. Well, you want your best players to say, all right, we need a bucket. I have to do something. And I'll tell you, the improvement of Katie Lou Samuelson using the, the dribble drive, Dave, because she, a year ago, was simply a catch-and-shoot player because that was her role. 6'5", Natalie Butler doesn't play a ton of minutes, ready to check in for Oriana in a moment. Yardi has Dangerfield on the floor. Nurse on the bench with two fouls. And a bad pass by Williams. She threw that one away. Dangerfield trying to get there and fouled. And they're howling inside the arena as Dillingham is hit with a foul. And Schaefer can't believe it. Was it clean? That's a clean oh. block. That's a clean block. And this, this sometimes happens to me, I think. You know, we've seen this day where, where maybe the official is anticipating that kind of play, but to me, that's a clean block. No way. Yeah, he was right. Twenty-nine to sixteen, Mississippi State. They finished second to South Carolina in the SEC during the regular season, and then fell to the Gamecocks in the tournament championship. William has left open a launch. William tied up for the rebound and tied up on the play. Possession arrow will take it the other direction of the UConn ball. I'll tell you what, give me Dominique Dillingham on my team any day of the week. I love the way she plays. Her toughness, she's not going to back down from anybody. She's going to get after it, even though she's undersized. I love the way that she plays. <laughs> How about that? Have you ever seen anybody when Gabby skies for a board like that want to mix it up with her when she's cupping the basketball? Samuelson trying to get started. And a foul with 6.14 to go, and another one against Connecticut. That will go against Butler. And Gino's turn to be beside himself. Yeah, she's leaning up. I thought that was a good call. Boy, it is rare to watch UConn and hear the crowd stunned like this. But they're absolutely shocked here tonight in our second national semifinal, at least to this point. They can't believe what they're seeing. Shot clock a factor now. Down to two. Vivian, way too strong. He fires that one out of play. Listen, we had our own concerns. And there was this perfect moment. Carol was referencing how poor the practices for Mississippi State have been over the last two days. It was so bad at one point this morning that a player threw the ball to no one, and it hit the symbol. <laughs> and Vic Schaefer is like, what are we, the bomb show at this point? Practice was so bad. But I'll tell you what, it was not a predictor of a start. Williams buries the short jump shot. She has nine points. She's certainly doing her part for the Husky. They're doing more than her part. They're not in this game. They're not within shouting distance of Mississippi State without Gabby Williams and her aggressive performance. Blair Schaefer, Vic Schaefer's daughter, about ready to get into this thing. She's a terrific three-point shooter. Well, the Huskies have looked discombobulated. John with a left hand. Nice effort there to get him to 20 points. So it's a mini run here for UConn, 7-0, to make it 29-20. Dillingham typically doesn't provide a lot of offense. She's all heart and defense. Vivian, that one rolls out. Rebounded away by Williams. The Huskies on the attack. Katie Lou Samuelson has been a complete non-factor so far. 
unable to get the ball, but 49% beyond the three-point line in the tournament. Fowler, 419 to go before halftime. How about this story? This is a mistake by nine over UConn. So we flash back to Bridgeport Sweet 16 last year. These Bulldogs fell behind early, could not recover. Brianna Stewart, 22. Katie Lou, 21. Morgan Tuck at 19. It was a massacre. Mississippi State with 18 turnovers, 28% shooting. The final score, 98 to 38. Biggest loss in NCAA tournament history at that time. And now fast forward to tonight. UConn has never led, and they have trailed by as many as 16 points. So how is Mississippi State doing it? Well, they've taken 29 field goal attempts. UConn has taken 16. How, have they, how are they plus 13 in field goal attempts? Eight offensive rebounds. They forced UConn into eight turnovers. If Mississippi State tries to play an efficiency game with UConn, they will, they will lose that. Manufacturing extra opportunities, that's been the way they've been able to get this lead. John with a couple at the line to cut it to seven. So the Huskies have picked up their pace, their scoring output in the last several minutes. And they are back in a zone here. And so will you be able to make enough shots? Here's Schaefer's first three. Batted around, controlled by Chong. This is a Husky team that is the number one shooting team in the country, number one in assists as well. But who shoots 53%? The Huskies do it routinely. Here's Chong on target with a three. That's a 12 nothing run for UConn. You can't walk up an aisle in this building and not run into a former UConn All-American. <laughs> they are everywhere this evening supporting the Huskies. 3.23 to go in the half. Here's Vivians for two. She can create her own shot on uh, virtually every attempt. Sometimes she'll use a screen, sometimes it's by individual effort. Oh, Vic Schaefer showing some trust in his senior. Two fouls for Victoria Vivian, so she's got to be careful on this end. Swing inside, and Gabby Williams gets it. 5'11 junior draws the foul. Well, Sonia Chong is playing as well as late into the season as she ever has. She's been an afterthought for three years. She's never earned the trust of Gina Oriema, but she gets the rave reviews of the former All-Americans. And then last year's national champions, Morgan Tuck and Brianna Stewart. Her teammates and coaches have been lauding her consistency in her senior year, but it has taken until her senior year for that to come around. Both Collier and Nurse on the bench with three minutes to go before halftime in Dallas. Mississippi State has led the entire first half. Back for William, here's Richardson. Tend to get off a shot, Vivian's open, got it! Three pointer! Give her 10. That terrific ball movement. And against the Connecticut defense that is typically very difficult to score against, the more you change sides of the floor, the more spaced you are, the better off you're going to be. Up top for Chong. Thought about a three. 2.20 to go in the half. Butler off the fake. And a travel. Sue Bird looking on, that is nine turnovers now for UConn. Great job here in Mississippi State. Katie Lou Samuelson had two shooters on that side. There was just one defender, so nice quick pass on target by Blair Schaefer to Victoria Vivians and knocks it down. Collier, the All-American, preparing to get back in now for Coach Oriema. Under two minutes before the break. What a story developing here. UConn having won 111 in a row, but up against an opponent, a foul here that is challenge, challenging them in every facet of the game. Williams picks up the foul. It'll be number two on Gabby Williams. And that'll send Vivians to the line. She makes 77%, shooting two. 
Coming up, the Northwestern Mutual halftime report, first half analysis. we dying to get our guys and how they're looking at this first half, get their point of view. And Don Staley joining us on the set as she has coached South Carolina to the national championship game. Where she made some great adjustments in the second half. Second half was night and day. They were down nine points and came back and beat Stanford. More aggressive defense, picking up the pace on the offensive end, not settling for jump shots. Williams off the fake. Collier taking that baseline. Williams with the finger roll. Is that an offensive or a block? Wow, that's close. Wow, it's a huge call right here because that would have been number three. Blocking foul. So they get little Morgan William for her second. This is it possible to go back a little ways because that, that's a bang bang and I'd like to see a frame earlier. Well you need to see if William is there before Gabby Williams Correct. takes off, yeah. Gabby Williams sinking the first one. Take a look. I'm okay with that block. You like a charge? See, I thought she I thought she slid she after did. the upward motion. She did. I'm just about to say I, I am such an exceptional official when I've got a third. <laughs> <laughs> really good. I'm very good. <laughs> Under 90 seconds before the half in Dallas. Vivians. Long range but no. Rebound tipped out of play. And it'll go back over to the Huskies hoping to cut in to this deficit. You know, one of the things Vic said to his kids today is, you've got to be disciplined. You've got to play so hard every possession. He said, guys, we have the length. We have the athleticism. And we have the toughness to do it. And boy, you just have got to be so impressed with how hard they have played. Well, Vic Schaefer is the first one to tell you he has learned so much from Gino Ariema. They met after that debacle, not long after, in the offseason, to talk about really how the pace and the intensity UConn plays with can be translated to other teams. It is translated tonight. Gino may regret having shared so much with Vic Schaefer. 36-27. UConn has only gotten off 18 shots in the first half. Incredibly low for them. Holmes with five to shoot it, slamming on the brakes. Johnson trying to lean in, and it's going to be off of Collier now to play with two on the shot clock. Well, you can see the scramble for this team because Vic Schaefer took out Morgan Williams and he took out Victoria Vivian. So who is going to be the player now that can create offense, especially under this short shot clock? Timeout. Mississippi State, Vic Schaefer wants to drop a play here. Incredible to think that the Huskies have one offensive rebound in the first half. Well, you're talking about Morgan William, who's coming off a career high 41 points against Baylor, 20 in the second half, 12 in the overtime. And all season long, she's been the most consistent player for this team. She has led her group with great confidence on the offensive end. She can create shots for herself and for others. And she is a dogged defender. Kara, they list her at 5-5. It might be generous, but what she does not lack for is heart and toughness. And, and let's not forget, Tierra McCowan has missed the bulk of this first half. She is your interior scorer. So what Mississippi State is doing here with one of their best players on the bench is even more remarkable. Got to get a shot in the air and will not. So that play does fail. 36-27. 28 seconds to go. And a foul before the inbounds. Against the Bulldogs. UConn 36 and 0. Oh, he's upset, and he should be. That's just a dumb decision by Blair Schaefer, is what it is. He played as good a first half as probably you've played all season long. Points are at a premium in terms of the lead that you have. And now you give Chong 94 feet away from the basket. You foul him. I got to say this. 
That's father-daughter. <laughs> and Blair makes it very clear that when she steps between the lines, she knows she's getting coached. And she just got coached right there. <laughs> Not for the first time. No. And in fact, Vic will tell you, sometimes it's unfair when your kid is the one, because you're harder on them than you are on the others. Chong at the line makes it 36 to 28. So the shot clock off, they can hold for the last one. Mississippi State has played a marvelous first half. Will it be a magical 40 minutes when all is said and done, trying to spring one of the great upsets ever? And beat a team that has won a record 111 in a row. William off the window, no. And get one up there. Johnson got it up in time, but can't hit it. First half is history. And Mississippi State goes to the locker room with an opportunity to shock the world. 36 to 28 on number one and undefeated UConn. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, Gabby, your team has not trailed at the half since the first game of the season against Florida State. What has you guys moving so slow and, and struggling right now? You know, they're taking away a lot of stuff right now. Um, our offense is pretty stagnant, so we just got to get guys moving and, and play UConn basketball. What did Gino say in the locker room? That we can't be scared. Right now, they hit us first, and we're, we're playing uh, scared right now, so we just got to go out there and be fearless. They are feisty, and they're really using their speed against you. How can you combat that? Yeah, you know, we're letting them speed us up, but we just have to stay composed and play the game we know how to play. Thank you, Gabby. Holly. So UConn had four assists and nine turnovers. We always talk about Gino Oriana's team being the best passing team in the country, and you could go across the roster and it would be positive in terms of assist to turnover ratio. It had everything to do with Mississippi State's defensive pressure, and I thought the points as Gabby gets off on the drive, the point that Andy Landers made at the half was absolutely critical. The failure of UConn to be able to reverse the ball is impacting their ability to get into their rhythm. We usually see UConn pick people apart with beautiful offense. Mississippi State taking a lot of stuff away. So it's just the fourth time during this 111 game UConn winning streak that they trailed at halftime. Just the fourth time. Shot clock at four. William looking to penetrate. Difficult angle taken away by the Huskies. I will say this about Gabby Williams. She never looks nervous to me. She didn't sound it. Collier with a quick strike. And that's something they didn't get a ton of in transition in the first half. And that's a great rim, by, rim run by Nafisa Collier. And this is interesting to me, Kara, because we've talked about the new faces and meeting every challenge. You're talking about kids who are in the final four. Gabby with a great defensive play. Collier, Katie Lou. They've got to face this game pressure for the first time in a Final Four, and you've got to stay composed. It's going to be fascinating to watch this because only four times in the midst of this streak have they trailed at the half. Amazing. UConn has become such a machine, and I think at times with the wins rolling one after another, another, you think sometimes they're immune to some of the emotions that other teams face. They're not robots. They are not robots. And just because other players in the past have, do have done it doesn't mean that they've conquered their inner fears or their inner insecurities of saying, hey, can we do this as well now that it's all on us? So it's fascinating to watch. It's fascinating to watch UConn getting down in the NCAA tournament by 16 points. Almost unfathomable. Richardson, no, nothing there for her. Chong just picked up her second foul a moment ago for the Huskies. Nurse also has two. Cross court for Chong. Samuelson's been really silent with just five points. Her sister did not score for Stanford when they were eliminated earlier tonight. Here's Samuelson starting to get a little bit noisy now. What are we seeing from UConn? They've gained traction on the defensive end of the floor. That has given them their foundation here in the first two minutes of the game and has in turn given them quality looks on the offensive end. UConn with a mini 7-0 run to get to it in three. They have never led tonight, the Huskies. Vivian, a lot of traffic there and draws the foul. That was a seven on the shot clock. Back to that three-pointer. 
the Connecticut starting to change sides of the floor with the basketball. A nice job by Nurse on the drive to pitch to the spaced corner. And the Husky faithful have something to cheer about. Vivians to the line, the junior out of Carthage, Mississippi. In that Baylor win, we talked about Morgan Williams was a lion. But Vivians was terrific too. She had 24 points and six assists, and she played every minute of an overtime game. Huskies in their 10th consecutive Final Four. So many records on the line here. And of course, they've played in 11 national championship games. They've won every single time. Over the top, Samuelson on the baseline. Back for Nurse in a three. Yes. Again, we see defensive mistakes lead to open shots. Tierra McCowan goes for a steal on the other side of the court against Gabby Williams. And Kia Nurse makes you pay on the other side with a three point shot. UConn down one. Third quarter of the national semifinal. Richardson, that's a travel. It's a good call. You know, she saw that she was going to have to get by Katie Lou and just in a bit of a rush to get there. Will this half become Katie Lou Samuelson's second half? Remember, she broke her foot in last year's semifinal against Oregon State, had to sit out the championship game, sometimes in tears after that injury, but healthy this year. Collier barreling inside. No, Williams kept it alive. Collier off the window. But that was all Gabby Williams. Extraordinary athleticism. Uh, Coach Ori and his wife Kathy saying, we got a lead. Amen. UConn finally, for the first time tonight, has taken the lead. Now I think you're really going to find out what Mississippi State is made of. Can they counter? Shot clock down to six. William thought about it. Richardson baseline. She's taking a lot of shots. And that's going to be a blocking foul. That'll go on Collier, and that'll be number three on the piece of Collier. He just recognizes it late. Oh, she's in the restricted area. So Richardson with two. They can't hit the first one. She is a 71% foul shooter. Foul trouble suddenly becoming a bit of an issue for the Huskies. Collier with three. Nurse has two. And Chong has two. And Williams with two. And a lot of time left in this third quarter. Gabby Williams. Almost lost the handle there. Shot clock at nine. Swung to Nurse. She can't bury it. Tied at 40. If you're just joining us, Mississippi State trying to spring one of the great upsets ever. And I mean in anything. Tied at 40. It was a 16-point lead in the first half of the Bulldogs. A leaning shot off the iron. Nurse with the rebound and a blocking foul on Mississippi State. We're going to take the break. 4.57 left in the third and a 40-40 tie. In high school basketball history, in fact, number one all time, with almost 6,000 points. You know, and you touched on this. She's a legend in the state. And so if there's a night where she's in single-digit scoring or struggling to score, she'll take all kinds of heat in social media and other areas. UConn had a brief lead, trying to get back on top here, down the stretch of the third quarter. Williams looking for some help. That's a kickball. 438 left in the quarter. Every pass contested. Every dribble exchange contested. 12 to shoot it now for Williams and the Huskies. 
Tally rolling inside and hit. So starting to get more touches here. Foul on that play by Richardson, her third for the Bulldogs. Collier at the line, which is very good, 83%. The All-American has been at her best the last 11 games, scoring 24 points, 10 rebounds on average. And the men's Final Four begins on Saturday at 6 p.m. on CBS. South Carolina taking on the Zags for a spot in the national championship game. And the South Carolina women are already in here in Dallas. So congratulations to the Gamecocks. Marvelous win knocking off Stanford. William can't penetrate. Dillingham outside. Vivian, that's a long one. Can't hit it. Dillingham with an effort of the save, but can't. So the Huskies have it with a one point lead. Mississippi State's energy level defensively with their on-ball pressure, with their ability to, to distract from reversing the basketball. Can you do that? Can you sustain that? And, and really cut into this UConn offensive machine for four quarters? That is their challenge here. Williams wants to drive it and kick it, stolen away by the quick William. And she is lightning quick all the way for two. How about the play on both ends? You know, she's in perfect defensive position. She looks for a little opportunity to help down. Nurse, yes. Oh, that's sweet. All net from three. Well, she shot it really well in the NCAA tournament. She's changed her shot a little bit this year, and it has become more effective. William drives it again with a teardrop. All 5-5 five, five of Itty Bitty. Back and forth we go, tied at 44. Samuelson calling for it, she's knocked off her feet. As that one is out of play with 3.06 to go. Well, itty bitty is not itty bitty in heart. And how about that? Every point guard knows, particularly undersized point guards, you better have the floater. And sometimes you've got to put extraordinary arc on it, and she did there. John with a catch. They love those catch and shoot three. She'll drive it instead. Got too far underneath. And on the reverse, it won't go. So the Bulldogs trying to retake the lead. It's slowing down the tempo a little bit. 33 wins for Mississippi State. They started their season 20 and 0, the best start in school history. Dillingham through the paint, shot clock at three. Great defense by Sanderson. Somehow it got to McCowan and she made the shot. South Carolina fans rooting for Mississippi State. Bulldogs by two. Flipped inside for Collier. She'll make it. She rarely misses those. Good no call by the official. Defenders late, not enough to blow a whistle on the defensive foul either. William trying to get around a defender and a foul. With 1.59 to go, that'll go on Chapel of Mississippi State, setting that screen. And for UConn, Crystal Dangerfield. Forty six forty six under two to go in the third and UConn in a tremendous battle tonight in the national semifinals Williams bouncing can't hit it and this is setting up for some fourth quarter Mississippi State not giving an inch Johnson on the drive. Dillingham trying to find an open shooter. Got it there. And it'll go the other way. But it takes constant movement. It takes all the quickness Gabby Williams has to deal with Tierra McCallum. You're talking about outsized and a thicker frame. She is working so hard, Gabby, on the defensive end of the floor. 
Gabby Williams 5'11. McCowan is 6'7. Well, not a little slight 6'7 <laughs> no. in terms of the girth. If there is such a thing. Nurse trying to spin and kick and travels with it. So some turnovers here down the stretch of this third. Yeah, it seemed like UConn had, had solved the riddle. And they had kind of figured out how they needed to play on the offensive end. And Mississippi State has asserted themselves, opposed their will a little bit more on the offensive end. You see the frustration there by Kia Nurse. Coach Schaefer looking for some instant offense here in the last minute or so of this quarter. He brings his daughter Blair in. She has been playing heavy minutes. Chapel straight on. Got a great look. That's a confident shot. No hesitation on the catch. We had basically a triangle with a shooter in the corner and a hard post up by McCowan, and that is confident basketball. Williams straight on. Yes, Gabby Williams with the bucket. Gabby 15 Williams. for the second team All American. Tied at 48. The Huskies 36 and 0 record on the line 111 consecutive wins on the line four consecutive national championships. Yeah, UConn just looked like they were changing the call defensively. Shot clock down to two. William kicks and the shot clock expires still time left 1.9 on the clock tied at 48. Moments away from the fourth quarter of the national semifinal. Looks like a couple of extra ticks went off, I thought. And we do go to the monitor for a quick look or conversation. Looks like they are going to add some time to 2.6. I thought so. So time to get some done here. From midcourt, Dangerfield got it up there. High off the window. And we are all tied going to the fourth quarter in Dallas. There are 10 minutes left in this one. Can Mississippi State pull off what would be the biggest upset in the history of this sport? UConn's tied it up. They're coming full force in the fourth. Well, Nafisa Collier, after starting the game one for five, is now three of her last four. They're looking to play through her a little bit more. Gabby Williams becoming a screener and a, a little bit more of a factor on the offensive end as well. Dangerfield, a freshman running the point here to start the fourth. Try to get it inside. Williams knocked it right back in her face. Shot clock at eight. Samuelson launches. An air ball. Chong went for the save, but right back to the Bulldogs. So Samuelson has been up and down. She has only eight points. How many, how many deflections on her own does Morgan William have tonight? It's like she knew that pick and roll was a slip, and she knew exactly where Dangerfield wanted to go with the pass. Feels like about eight or nine. She has it on the dribble out of Birmingham, Alabama. And a foul with 9.08 in the contest. It's going to be on Kean Nurse and number three on Nurse. Schaefer goes down in the lane. It should be on Gabby Williams. She just flat looked like she ran through Schaefer. That will be her third. It's a simple upstream. There has to be a little bit of room for her to turn. That's close. Schaefer gave up the dribble. Is Chapel. McCowan getting a touch in close. Air mailed it. Couple air balls to begin the fourth quarter. 48 48. Nervousness throughout this arena. We have seen. Mississippi State avoid those sustained runs that the Connecticut Huskies are so known for. Look at William all over her fellow point guard. Sean 
Pulls up, around and out. Mississippi State looking to retake the lead. Here's Bibby. That's in and out. Looks like Sean got her fingertips on it, deflected it out of play, so we'll be Bulldog basketball. This is something they really struggled with earlier today. They're, they're underneath out of bounds plays. It was so frustrating to Vic Schaefer. Schaefer will inbound it. Chong out. Collier back in for Gina Oriema. William pulls up, fires, Come hits on. it. She can get that shot off awfully quick. She's so fast. The stop to getting into her jump shooting motion, she just gets so much separation because of the hard stop. Mississippi State with a fourth quarter lead over UConn in the national semifinal. Another whistle. Those are coming fast and furious here in the quarter. Vivian's with her third foul. Well, Pat, the 39, Victoria Vivian's third, two number one. Dillingham back in, and the defensive the specialist into the all-SEC defensive team. Shooter. So that's a good substitution. Instead of taking Vivian's out with her third foul, you put her on Katie Lou Samuelson, who's not as much of a threat to drive and create contact. McCowan knocked it right back for Nurse. It's a bit of a wild drive down the lane. William again thrown to the floor. No whistle there. Mississippi State with a two-point lead. The pass for William, her shot. Not on target this time. Boy, Vic Schaefer, though, orchestrating every possession on the offensive end. Stamping his feet over there. As he calls the defensive switches, that one will spin out of play, and Dangerfield just lost it. That's a young player just forcing the action instead of just reversing the basketball, right? Make the simple play. What did Juno tell Holly? said, when you get tentative, you start to go one-on-one. -on -one. That's exactly what that young player just did. Well, she remains in the game, Chong on the bench. Dillingham, not a big shooting force for the Bulldogs. Chapel fires. Too strong, Samuelson with the rebound. It's really important for Mississippi State to continue to get the right people the right shots. Williams spinning inside, and she'll draw the foul. Gabby Williams at 73% from the line. Fouled by McCowan, who picks up her third. Remember, she got two quick fouls in the opening minutes. Sat forever, and yet Mississippi State never missed her. And built a 16-point lead on the Huskies in the first half before UConn recovered. Thursday, 6 Eastern, the Frozen Four gets underway in Chicago Harvard and Minnesota Duluth, facing off in the National Center. ESPN 2 and watch ESPN. Back to tie 50 50. Connecticut back into their zone. McCowan close off the iron. Gina Oriana showing confidence in Dangerfield to try and run the point. Williams got a great look, couldn't bury it. Neither side is exactly on fire. No. No, they're not. And, you know, I think both of these teams need to look to attack, get the ball in the paint by virtue of the driver from Mississippi State. Look to get McCowan a touch. William again. Not this time. McCowan beat everybody. Right back up. Oh, she creates her own touch on that one. Yeah, I mean, she's 6'7. And we've talked about limited numbers front court. It's also an undersized front court for Connecticut. And McCowan just too big. Get only a handful of time. McCowan with the fifth. Williams got in front. She tiptoes in, goes down. Not initially a whistle there, but finally one. A very awkward looking play with 5.28 to go. And McCowan needing a little bit of help to get to her feet. 
That foul will go on Chapel of Mississippi well, State. Tara Chapel, her second team back number three. So she picks up number second two. Take back. a look. McCowan doing a great job getting in the passing lane. You know Gabby Williams is not going to give up on the play. Great job going underneath. Make the 6-7 player be agile and make a play. And she loses Ooh. her balance there a little bit. That, that looked that, that didn't look very good. She's going out of the ball game right now. Shinwei Okori. She's holding that left knee. Okori has started almost every game, save for a handful of 6-5 senior from Nigeria. Hasn't seen her family in about six years. Williams looking for a cutter. Well, you've got to believe that Nafisa Kali is going to get touches here in his last five minutes. Chong back in for two. Good isolation and duck in by Gabby. One of the critical aspects of this basketball game, you got Gabby and Nafisa both with triple digit offensive rebounds. They help UConn in most circumstances get almost 40% of their own misses. Tonight, two and zero offensive boards respectively, Kara. Mississippi State has not only guarded incredibly well, they finished the possessions with the de defensive rebounds, and it has completely limited UConn scoring here. Mississippi State by two, four and a half minutes to go. Williams with that move she loves so much but couldn't finish it. The Bulldogs trying to add to that slender advantage and play their way to a national championship. And the upset of upsets. Big Schaefer orchestrating from his sideline. Vivian's nurse on her. In tight, got it! 56-52, timeout, Gino Oriema. Some of the greatest streaks in history. Here's how they ended. Notre Dame ending Oklahoma's 47-game win streak in football in 1957. 1974 was Notre Dame ending UCLA's 88-game win streak. And December 31, 2010, Stanford stopping UConn's 90-game winning streak in Palo Alto. By the numbers now, the third streak of 100-plus wins in Division I history, sitting at 111. Only three of the wins by fewer than double figures. You know, I, I said earlier, Dave, that I thought it would take somebody having for themselves a moment. To be honest with you, the entire Mississippi State team to this point in this game have, have had themselves a moment. It's taken every single one of these kids to be disciplined, to the game plan, to apply consistent pressure, to be physically and mentally tough. They've got 343 for one of the greatest upsets in this game's history. Can they close it? Morgan Williams has been the toughest player on the floor. Defensively, her ability to disrupt with her anticipation skills, with her athleticism, and then when they needed buckets here in the second half down the stretch to get to the lane and be able to finish. Yeah, Itty Bitty's on the scene all right. She's been on the scene since the first five minutes of this game. Plenty of time left for UConn. You know, this is just continue to execute, get quality shots. Samuel said that for her certainly a high quality shot. And UConn pulls back to within one. She's got 11, three of six from beyond the arc. 56-55. Chong on William. William coming off an amazing 41 points against Baylor. Backs it away. Forward again. Off the window, no. What tremendous defense by Chong there, the keeper in front. Under three to go in the national semifinal. UConn trying to regain the lead. They did not have a lead in the game until it was 40 to 39. 
Sean denied and fouled on the reach in by William. Her third. And Shania Chong, historically, though her career has been very spotty and has been a big playmaker in possession ball games. And to your point about the defensive play she just made, it was a huge part of the reason why she couldn't see the floor for three years. The most important thing you can earn with any coach, but most especially with Chino Oriana, is trust. And he didn't trust her on the defensive end. The kid finally came to grips, Dave, with the fact that I, I got to play on that end if I'm going to hope to play before my career is over. She has done that here in her senior year. At the line, she nails them both, and Connecticut has the lead back. Knocked away from behind by Williams. She got the steal, gets it back, and made the basket. A giant play. 59-56. was actually the biggest lead of the game for Connecticut. Stay composed here. Vic has some timeouts at his disposal. Chooses not to, to use one there. McCollin being pushed out of that lane by Collier. They're letting him play. Shot clock at three. Vivians wants to shoot it. A determined drive and draws the foul as the shot clock was expiring. On who? That's on Gabby? Well, that's a bailout. That's number four on Gabby Williams. No, that's a bad call. No that, that's, a, wow. that's a horrible call. That's like that. outstanding defense that she got penalized for. Vivians can't hit, though. She makes 77 percent. But that's still the fourth foul with two minutes to go on Gabby Williams. Correct. It changes how she has to play on both ends. Williams makes the second two-point lead for the Huskies. High drama here in the last two minutes in Dallas. Given the final the last time they played, 60 points, UConn blowing them away. Who would have guessed this? Mississippi State with an opportunity now to tie or take the lead. Really bad decision by Collier. This individual play when it wasn't necessary. Now Vic will use a timeout. Why is so? Because you need to get a quality opportunity here. He still has two to go. We take another look back in time. The last time the Huskies walked off the floor a loser. Taking on then number six, Stanford. UConn was number one. Dana Stewart put up 23 for the Huskies. The game went to overtime. Amber Orange made a big shot at the buzzer. Then one with a minute 39 left in overtime to take the lead. But free throws from Stanford, including the last one by Carly Sanderson, put Stanford up by two to win the game, 88 to 86. UConn has lost one time in four years. One of the things that's happened, Dave, uh, over the last several possessions for Mississippi State has taken some time. Vic is orchestrating the offense, but they're getting deep in the shot clock because of some of the things UConn's doing defensively. What happens here? No threes if you're UConn. Williams outside the three. Knocked out of play off of UConn. I'll tell you, they got lucky. There was a miscommunication there, and Chong did a great job of hustling to close out there on Vivian, so she couldn't get a clean look at it. Nine seconds to shoot here for Mississippi State. Now down to five. Down to three, two, Vivian's got it! A three! Mississippi State by one! to 59 with a minute four to go. Another possession where, boy, that shot clock is dwindling. And Victoria Vivian sprinting hard on the baseline, gets herself enough separation. Kia Nurse is trailing behind. Vivian lets it fly. She is fearless as a scorer. This is her role. This is who she is and what she does. 
one of the hardest things to do to guard a shooter off of those baseline screens. And we see Dak Prescott getting hyped as well. And he's been into this the whole game. I mean, he has been into it for Mississippi State, of course, a former Mississippi State quarterback. But he's actually been into both games yeah, he has. for the SEC. Yeah, yeah, he has. Could have an all-SEC championship game. South Carolina is already in to the title game on Sunday night. So 104 to go. UConn with the ball. Down by one, a winning streak of 111 games. One minute to play in the game, one minute to play. Mishandled by Collier. Boy, she didn't look like she was ready. The Bulldogs closing in. 46 seconds to play to make history. Morgan Williams, the junior from Birmingham, looking as calm as could be. Outside the three, launching, short. And a foul on the play with 27.7 to go. That'll be against Mississippi State. Over the back of Collier, who has looked out of sorts. She had the one four play where I thought she forced a possession, had a tough drive, didn't make the shot. Mishandles the last pass, rushing a little bit, and now at the free throw line. Man, William went for the jump, right? Did she? Yeah. Sure did. Cool. So Collier, 83% shooter. Front rims the first one. She'll have another one coming. So very important if you're Mississippi State. You block out Gabby Williams here. Box out. She has tied the game at 60. There are two things that need to happen. Either you score and win the game, or you miss a shot and you go to OT. Vic Schaefer's going to call timeout to make sure his troops understand that. Timeout. This you wouldn't mind an opportunity for a follow. But definitely, you don't want to give an opportunity for Connecticut to get the ball back and have any kind of desperation. This is a good foul shooting team. 73% for the year. They go to the line a lot. So they're tested in these situations. Tied 60-60. Who would have guessed it tonight? This has been fantastic. It, you know, I think it's very important because Connecticut has a timeout that you can't take that shot too early. Because remember, women's college basketball, timeout advance. If you go too early potentially for that follow, you're giving Connecticut, if they corral the rebound, an opportunity to get a look within the half court. But I have the ball in Morgan Williams' hands. She's brought me this far. 41 points against Baylor in the Elite Eight. Give it to Itty Bitty and let her make a play. Going early has not been an issue down the stretch of this ball game. They're using every bit of every clock they've ever had, only 20.8. And I think you see them run the baseline screens again, to be honest with you. They'll try to get Vivian's open. But you're right, the decision maker she may not be the shot taker but the decision maker here is Morgan Williams 60 60 and what has turned into one of the great games in the history of the women's NCAA tournament in this national semifinal 20.8 it may not yet be decided depending on how this plays no question I wouldn't object to five more minutes let's get greedy I'll take it OT Victoria Bibbins, Vivian's going to put it in play here with 20.8 showing. William, Nurse comes out to attack. And a timeout again by Vic Schaefer, 17.6 to go. So burning through his timeouts here. Still has one foul to give. Remember the new rules in women's college basketball, five fouls, you shoot two free throws. Another case where I wouldn't mind seeing the one-on-one. -on -one. I like the quarters, I like the five fouls, but I still wouldn't mind the one-on-one -on -one opportunities in women's college basketball. So you, you're judicious here if you're UConn defensively, and you want to be sure that you use that foul that can benefit you the most. Now, Mississippi State has just used their last time out, okay? So he's having to draw up something, and if you're able to do a foul and get a side out of bounds, now maybe you create some indecision or an opportunity where he's trying to put people in places because they don't have that timeout. Gina Oriema has one remaining. As you mentioned, Schaefer with none. Blair Schaefer is now in. Very serious three-point threat, and they do trust her to take the big shot. Vivian's again to try and inbound does for William. 
And a quick whistle there, 16.7 to go. So that's the last foul. I, I get it, but I feel like that's a little early. Real early. Because you know they're, gonna, they're not going to shoot it early. John with her third. Some dangerous shooters in the game here for the Bulldogs into the backcourt for William as Chong picks her up. Ten seconds to go. Tied at 60. Five seconds. William looking for an upset for the ages. Blocked by William. Time to get a heave. Chong, no! And this game is going overtime as well it should. A frenetic finish. A great defensive play, a heave that did not go, and overtime in Dallas. Boy, Dak Prescott feeling the stress of the moment as much as the players. Boy, Morgan Williams' ability to get by on the triple drive, even in the face of quality defense, but how about the rotation by Connecticut and the rejection in a big moment? She's wow. fearless. Gabby Williams is fearless. Remember, she has four fouls in this game. This is for everything. And it's a blow by of Collier. She meets her at the top absolutely clean. What a play by Gabby Williams to save UConn and give them an opportunity to stay alive and potentially be back in the national and championship Kara game. still had the presence of mind to look up the floor and get an outlet pass. Although the shot was no good, they had a little bit of time to try and get off a final shot. So five minutes up there, we go to overtime. UConn 60, Mississippi State 60 for the right to play for the national championship. What an extraordinary effort by the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Again, going back to what they faced a season ago. That was a beatdown, 60 points. They weren't in the game after the first five minutes. Vic Schaefer told us Two days ago, I was humiliated, embarrassed. They watched the tape the night they got back. It took them an hour to get through the first 10 minutes. Pride was at stake for this group tonight, and they played like it, Dave. And somebody went back to the weight room and put the number 60 on the weight room door. They painted it there as a reminder of how ugly that was. But look at this, a year later, and they are right there with the Huskies, tooth and nail. That's why that, I said that fourth foul on, on Gabby Williams was crucial. Swung inside for Collier. Off the window, no. And Collin with a big rebound. UConn making a 10th consecutive Final Four appearance. Nobody else has made more than five in a row. So William had a chance to make history there, but was denied by Gabby Williams on a marvelous block in the final seconds of regulation. Three to shoot it, Vivians. That one is blocked by Williams again. She's everywhere once again. Samuelson, two-pointer this time. The lean-in shot won't drop. Look at Williams up there to snatch the rebound and a foul. This young woman, this is amazing. This is an amazing performance. I mean, she is relentless. And you've seen this type of effort, so the type of effort doesn't surprise you. But how she is playing with no fear, with the four fouls. She just got a rebound from behind a six foot seven player to give her team an extra opportunity. And she also just fouled out Victoria Vivians. That is number five on their lead scorer, who is stunned. And a shot created and a fearless scorer in her own right. A bring back Blair Shaper, a tremendous shooter, somebody else who can space the floor. This woman has got to be exhausted. I'll tell you what, the pace of play for her, and it's beginning to show at the line a little bit, as she missed on both of those. And she has had that incredible capacity to resuscitate that engine and get going again. She's done it all through her career. Safer kick ball by Gabby Williams in overtime of the national semifinals. Shot clock resets to 15 on the kick ball. 
So now with Vivian's out of the game, the player you have to be attached to and know where she is is number one, Blair Schaefer. That's the three-point shooter on the floor for Mississippi State. At 40% out there. They do get it inside and a whistle as UConn converged on the interior. And a foul with 336 left in OT. That'll go on Collier. That's number four on the feast of Collier. So he came on the broadcast talking about... Yes, this is an undefeated Connecticut team, but they were more vulnerable than any team in the last several years for the Connecticut Huskies. Yeah, you said it. And foul trouble, right? So you've got your two interior players where you have so little depth. Both with four fouls and have got to navigate the remainder of this overtime period with those two players mindful of four on both ends. UConn losing the top three players from last year's champions, top three spots in the WNBA draft. Yeah, and, and every time I'm on offense, if I'm Mississippi State, I am attacking both of those players. I am looking to get Gabby Williams or Collier into action where they could be at a deficit. Williams on a hard drive, deflected out of play, they'll keep it. And as McCowan, who had early foul trouble but overcame that, has been tough defensively. Just a solid job by McCowan here to utilize her strength, which is her length. Samuelson over the top for Nurse. Mississippi State by two. John back for Gabby Williams. Pass interrupted by Richardson and a theft. That's how the game started. But the activity, the deflections, the intense defensive pressure on point with their scout. And again, I go right at. I know they're playing a little soft zone here, but go right at him. Get McCowan the ball. She wants it. Shot clock at nine. Stolen away by Gabby Williams. He's a one-person wrecking crew. The swing, here's Nurse for three. Collier with a second effort. Well, the fans here in Dallas hanging on every single play we in all overtime. Are. We all are. <laughs> the whole country is. Sanderson, that's a tough angle. No. And now the Bulldogs hoping to build on their lead. As slender as it may be, 62 to 60. Richardson, not sure exactly what happened there. She just flipped it out of play. A sloppy turnover, 62-60, but UConn has the ball. Who do the Huskies turn to here? Under two minutes remaining in OT. On the baseline, Williams. The kick. Nurse again. She's gone cold here. Williams with another board. Samuelson. Got it! She has tied it at 62. What a game. This is as good as we've seen in a national semifinal. How about Gabby Williams? Just extra possession after extra possession. Heart, toughness, athleticism. Over the top, McCowan, and you're not going to stop that. Tierra McCowan, 10 points, none bigger than those last two. And a timeout, Gina Oriema. 1-0-4 to go in overtime. Mississippi State by two on UConn. Overtime in the final four, and Mississippi State clinging to a two-point lead, trying to stun Connecticut. Vic Schaefer has been masterful in his play calling, understanding time score and situation. Gabby Williams has four fouls, so what do you do? Overload the side, get your six-foot-seven player in a post-up situation. Gabby goes for broke, goes for the steal. She's gotten a few of those, and now you have a wide-open layup. Excellent play call and execution. Oh, yeah, Dak Prescott, he's like a match. She's been doing that all night, as she has to, because what will happen if McCowan makes a catch? It's an automatic layup. She can't challenge because of the four fouls. That's their strategy. They know they're outsized. Every time Gabby's got to go for a steal, she's got to get around and try to negate the size with her speed.
Overtime surprisingly has not been good to UConn in the NCAA tournament. Chong with it at midcourt. One minute to go in overtime. Williams tucked away by McCowan. Samuelson went down. She's in pain deep in the backcourt. But Williams going to take her time here. Mississippi State with a two point lead. Many believe this was impossible to defeat the Huskies from the corner. Schaefer airmailed that one. Too strong. Samuelson with it. And another timeout. Gina Oriema wants to draw one up here, trailing by two. And Katie Lee took a pretty good shot. Dillingham was checking her. Dillingham is giving up size on the bottom side of your screen. There's action out front. There's a little mismatch. And that's an elbow to the throat. So that's a missed call to me. That's that's a foul. So they should be able to go to the monitor and take a look at this they as a sure possible should. flagrant. Yep. And they are. As she went down on her back, clutching at her throat. This could be very, very interesting here. Gene Oriam and his coaching staff picked up on that very quickly. Flagrant one is a personal foul deemed excessive in nature or unnecessary, not based solely on the severity of the act, causing excessive contact with an opponent, not a legitimate attempt to play the ball, fouling the player clearly away from the ball, not directly involved in the play. That would certainly qualify. Yep. I mean, I look at that. I, I think it. I think it qualifies. That's no a question. One. There's no question it qualifies. So the officials at the monitor. What will they do here? With 26.6 to go, and that is the play they are reviewing. So it's our first official review of the night in this national semifinal with Mississippi State on top 64-62 in overtime. Jesse Dickerson walked away as though there had been a decision made and actually let the Mississippi State players come to the floor. And it's the other two officials who, who wanted to look at it again. You're talking about shots and the ball here. Yep. Oh, it, it, there's no question. If it's called a play to run, it changes the complexion of the game. Entirely. Yep. Give you a look at the rules so you can review the ones I just read to you. Uh, flagrant one, flagrant two. Of course, a two's an automatic ejection from the contest. So, in both of your opinion, this rises to a flagrant one. No, it's no yes. question in my mind. Jones, Forsberg, and Dickerson still talking about this one. They're no longer looking at the play. Gina Oriema as interested as we are to find out what the call is coming back here if they're going to go with a flagrant one with his team down by two. Okay, now it's starting to, to drag on a little bit long, right? I, I get it. You want to make sure you have it right, but we need to make a decision now. Boy, as big a moment and as big a call as anywhere in this entire tournament. Take another look. This is real speed now. Dillingham tying up the Samuelson. Down she went, clutching at her throat. But she got nailed underneath that chin. Looks like they've made their decision because they're bringing the coaches together. These coaches, by the way, are friends. They had a lunch and a dinner last year when the season was over. And judging by Vic's reaction, that's absolutely the call. Yep. Oh, he's apoplectic here. If you would both agree with a flagrant one. Let's go to Holly Rowe. I just heard the officials explain to both head coaches that they have contact to the face. It's an automatic flagrant one. You can see Vic Schaefer is furious with what, what, what he has just been explained. But you saw from the re replay monitor, what they kept seeing was more looks were coming in. That's why it took so long. They were getting additional looks at the play.
play, and they have deemed it a flagrant one. Well, his staff practically had to hold him back, so Samuelson at the line, shooting foul shots, makes the first. She's 84%. She'll have another one coming, and UConn will have the ball with 26.6 to go. Very smooth there to tie the game. And they'll be in a very similar circumstance that we saw Mississippi State in earlier. Only 1.5 seconds differential. I, I know he's angry. I know he's upset given the circumstances. Right, I think there's very little question. Uh, there's no question that's the right call. So, so just like Mississippi State had, UConn can take this thing to the end, and you don't want to give Mississippi State a chance to get the ball back. Gabby Williams back for Chong. 19 seconds to go in overtime. Overtime number one. Chong on the drive, stumbling, lost it. It's going to roll out of play, and it's back over to Mississippi State. Why in the world are you going so soon? You have the opportunity to get the last shot or send it into overtime. Wow. 12 seconds, 12.3 and another timeout. So we've said all along that these Connecticut players are bearing the weight of these kinds of plays for the first time in their history and that they were vulnerable. And we've seen moments of that. And this is a case in point. We said you go when there's only a chance for you to go to overtime or win the basketball game. Instead, Chong turns the corner and gets herself out of control. And I think this is a great no call. It's a great no it's call. It's a great no call. You started at 18 seconds to start the play. You're in single digits when you're starting at the end of a game when score is tied. I mean, single digits, you're waiting until it's under 10. I'm baffled. We got a chance to win this thing. Yes. I'm also impressed by Morgan William with the quick feet to yes. get over there as she did. Neither team with a timeout here. 12.3 in overtime. No timeouts, and Mississippi State cannot advance that. Got to go full four here. Dillingham across midcourt. Dillingham with it. Five to get off a shot. William on the drive. Pull up, pull up. Mississippi State in overtime at the buzzer. Morgan Williams. Mississippi State has ended the streak at 111 consecutive games. It's over. My goodness. Time in the national semifinal. Big Schaefer's Mississippi State Bulldogs have shocked the world. They have defeated the Yukon Huskies. Many believe that was impossible. It took overtime at the buzzer by the littlest player in the building. Keep in mind, this is after a career high 41 in the regional final against number one seed Baylor, including 12 in overtime. She mastered the tempo. She dictated the kind of shots her team got, and she delivered in the end when necessary. You have to check all of the boxes to beat UConn, and that is exactly what Mississippi State did tonight. They were the tougher team. They won every 50-50 ball. They were the more disciplined. They executed better down the stretch. They made the smarter plays. It's been 111 games since we've been able to say that about an opponent of the UConn Huskies. Congratulations to Mississippi State. What an upset. Keep in mind, when she scored the 41 points last week, it was the day three years and a day from the passing of her father. And this kid has said this tournament is dedicated to the memory of the man who taught me the game and spent hours with me, honing my skills, reminding me that I was not too short to play the game of basketball on the Division I level. Guess what, Morgan William? Your dad is right. Well, it goes into the books as one of the greatest games 
I think in the history of women's college basketball, here's how it ended. 5-5 five, five junior Morgan William in overtime at the buzzer. A shocker. UConn undefeated no more. Mississippi State is on to the championship against South Carolina in an all SEC final. And they will long remember this night. That's over the outstretched arms of the great Gabby Williams who had a game saving block earlier in the night. Not that time. Think about this too with Morgan William. She's the one that got her feet in place and stopped Chong who missed the shot on the other end. And then just seconds later with the ball in her hand she wins it. He's almost astonished. You know what I want to say about Vic Schaefer because I've, I've made this comment over the years about Gino Arama and that he's a puppet master and he pulls the strings better than anybody to his players. Well, the puppet master was mastered a little bit tonight by Vic Schaefer in terms of how he pulled the strings, how he set his team up on the offensive end of the floor to get them quality looks. It was a brilliant playing performance, but it was a masterful coaching performance as well by Vic Schaefer. Let's go to Holly with the star of the night, Morgan William. Well, Morgan, your coach just leaned over and said in your ear, you were ready for this moment, and how did you answer him? Um, I just told him thank you. Like I said, I mean, he gave me a chance to come play for SEC, and now I'm having all these opportunities, and I'm in the Final Four. So, I mean, it's just an incredible experience right now. You've been told you're too small your whole life. And you decide this game against the mighty UConn with a defensive play and a game winner. How did you come up so big? Um, I live for moments like this. Um, UConn, I mean, they're an incredible team, you know. And for me to make that shot against them is just, it's unbelievable. I'm still in shock right now. But I wanted to take the shot. I, I wanted to take the shot. So I took the shot and I made it. What did you see when you rose up for the shot? I saw opportunity. I saw I had got enough separation to get it off, so I wouldn't get it blocked. Because last possession, I got it blocked with the layup, so I figured I can pull in and get a jumper this time because she'll take me for the layup. And that's what I did, and I made the shot. I'm not sure anyone believed that Mississippi State would beat UConn today. Why did your team believe? I mean, we just came out being some great teams. We beat Baylor, and to come in here, <laughs> sorry, it's so loud in here, but to come in and just. We knew we had a chance. We had, I mean, this game was personal. I had to get beat by CeCe last year. I mean, it hit our heart and it's pride. It's prideful. So, we, I mean, we had to redeem ourselves, and I think we did today. Coach Schaefer, I heard the players saying after this huddle, after the celebration, we've got one more. This is not the mountaintop. How do you remind them of that? I don't think I'll have to. I, I think uh, they'll come back down pretty quick. But you know what? I want them to enjoy this right now. This is special. This took a gutsy, gutsy performance today by an entire team. What an unbelievable team we just beat tonight. Um, and again, I don't have to play them 100 times. I only got to beat them once. And it's not the best out of seven. That is one heck of a basketball team, the greatest coach of all time. But how proud am I of our kids for coming out and just, it, it was personal. I mean, it had to be. You, you have to question when you got beat as bad as we did, it became, we, we questioned ourselves, hey, we're going to show the world what we're made of. That wasn't us a year ago. And so we wanted to come out today, and, and really, it was a chance that we got. How many people get a chance a year later to play the same team that just beat the ever-loving dog out of you? And you get a chance to come back and play them again a year later on a little bit bigger stage. I mean, what a blessing. So we just took, you know, we're going to give God the glory for number 34 today and try to go get 35 on Sunday. How does it help you that the next opponent is a very familiar opponent to you in South Carolina? Well, I'm not sure it helps anybody. I, they know us better than anybody. Um, obviously, we had a knockdown drag out with them in the SEC championship game. We had one in the regular season. So it will be, it'll be a very difficult task again. But hey, that's all we've known in the NCAA tournament really all year. Just give us another difficult one, but please don't nobody pick us. Don't anybody pick us. You had not picked us all year, so just keep saying we're not good enough. 
Morgan, do you have one more in you? Yeah, I have one more in me, of course. I mean, I got this far. I might as well keep going. Go for it all. All right, well, we will see you in the national championship game. Praise the Lord, go dogs. Go dogs. She scores 41 against Baylor to get him here and hits the game winner in overtime to shock the world and the Yukon Huskies in the final four. So Mississippi State on to the championship. Should be a dandy against South Carolina. That's the face of a winner.